The wreckage of Air India Flight 171 lay wrapped in questions, soaked in grief and shielded by silence. It wasn't just a crash. It was a technological riddle that refused to give answers. A nightmare frozen in time, with over 200 souls vanishing into flames just seconds after takeoff. The world demanded to know, what happened inside that cockpit? What could bring down a state-of-the-art Boeing 787 Dreamliner in mere seconds, with no warning, no storm, no mechanical distress? Now, after countless theories, sleepless investigations, and hushed whispers across aviation forums, the black box has finally spoken, and what it revealed didn't just unsettle investigators. It shattered Boeing's reputation and exposed a flaw so absurd, so microscopic, that it defies logic. What you're about to hear is not just the story of a crash. It's a revelation that will haunt every engineer, every pilot, and every passenger who dares to trust the sky again. Because when the truth surfaced, it didn't point to sabotage or terrorism. It pointed to the captain's seat. The morning after the crash, while investigators combed through a landscape of scorched debris and twisted fuselage, a bright orange cylinder was spotted on the rooftop of a hospital dormitory near the site. It was the black box, more precisely, the flight data recorder, FDR, still intact, still pulsing with the final seconds of the doomed aircraft. With urgency bordering on desperation, it was rushed to India's Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau, where a multinational team, including Boeing and GE experts, began decoding its secrets. What they found defied expectations. The Dreamliner had taken off in optimal conditions. Engines were stable, speed, climb rate, and instruments, all normal, until second 15. That's when the unthinkable happened. The captain's seat slid backward, not slowly, not gently, but violently, by nearly 30 centimeters in less than a second. A movement so sudden it caused the pilot, by pure reflex, to grab onto the thrust levers. But those levers were already at full power, and his involuntary grip yanked them straight to idle. Both engines shut down, and just like that, the aircraft became a flying coffin, 65 meters above the ground. At first, the investigators could hardly believe it. A seat? A sliding seat could cause a high-tech aircraft to nosedive into the earth? They examined the debris. The seat's locking pin, a component worth barely $20, had broken. What made this revelation even more chilling was the fact that the same pin had been repaired just 11 days earlier. Yet, no post-repair testing had been done. No stress tests, no safety verification, nothing. The entire safety of the cockpit relied on trust in a pin. In aviation, that's unheard of. And yet, here it was. The trigger that turned precision engineering into carnage. The captain's reflex to stabilize himself sealed the fate of 200 lives in under half a second. The Boeing 787's supposed backup systems? They never activated. The Dreamliner, built to fly on one engine, couldn't even stay airborne on two when those engines were silenced by human reflex and faulty hardware. And that's when the world realized this wasn't a tragic coincidence. It was a design flaw. But the mystery deepened. Was this just a one-in-a-million fluke? Or had Boeing been warned? Internal documents began to surface. Reports from engineers inside Boeing's cockpit design division, expressing concern about the very locking system used in the pilot seats. Vibrational tests had shown slippage. Senior staff had signed off on warnings that were never escalated. In fact, a critical report highlighted the exact scenario. A worn locking pin, a sudden backward slide, and a captain reacting instinctively. But Boeing's upper management never saw it. Or worse, ignored it. The Dreamliner had no mechanical lock to prevent both engines from being reduced simultaneously by human reflex. And that meant the system allowed a fatal input, not because it failed, but because it obeyed. The plane did exactly what the human told it to do, and that's exactly why it crashed. This wasn't just an engineering oversight. It was a systemic failure, one that placed cost-cutting, production speed, and bureaucracy over human life. The crash of AI-171 wasn't an isolated incident. Investigators began drawing connections with other tragedies. Lion Air Flight 610, Ethiopian Airlines 302, Air France 447, all disasters triggered by seemingly minor technical quirks, overlooked failsafes, or poor system design. 
In each case, Boeing or Airbus took months, sometimes years, to admit fault. And just like with the 737 MAX, Boeing's response to the AI-171 crash was silence. No acknowledgement of a faulty pin, no promise to review seat safety, no accountability. The company that builds aircraft worth over $150 million couldn't explain how a $10,000 seat part, or the lack of a mechanical override, led to a catastrophe. And now, families of victims, lawyers, engineers, and aviation watchdogs are all asking the same chilling question. If Boeing knew and didn't act, is this still a tragedy or a crime? Shortly after the black box was decoded, an international team of flight safety analysts recreated the scenario using Boeing's official 787 simulator in Washington. The goal was simple, test whether the replicated conditions could truly lead to an unrecoverable crash. But what happened in the simulation room left even seasoned pilots rattled. The moment the simulated captain's seat was jolted backward, every pilot instinctively grabbed onto the nearest support, and that meant their hand landed on the throttle. Within 1.2 seconds, both engines dropped to idle. In 2.7 seconds, the plane lost critical lift, and by 4.5 seconds, the Dreamliner hit virtual terrain. No pilot, no matter how experienced, could correct it in time. It wasn't human error, it was human reaction. The engineers went pale. The instructors were speechless. The data didn't lie. The aircraft systems had no countermeasure. The scenario wasn't hypothetical anymore. It was repeatable. And yet, Boeing had never publicly tested for this exact possibility. While the media waited for Boeing's press conference, something unexpected happened. A confidential memo surfaced from inside the company, dated just six months before the AI-171 crash. It outlined concerns raised by two senior flight engineers about throttle linkage vulnerabilities in low-altitude rollout phases, a cryptic but unmistakable reference to the very behavior seen in the crash. The engineers recommended a system-wide audit of cockpit hardware, particularly seat mechanisms and manual override limits. But the memo was buried. Worse still, an internal directive suggested avoiding public acknowledgement of any design flaws that might require retrofitting older Dreamliners already in service. Why? Because grounding the fleet would cost billions. One insider, anonymously interviewed, said, We were told, if it hasn't happened, it doesn't exist. If it does happen, pray it's pilot error. AI-171 wasn't an accident waiting to happen. It was an accident scheduled by denial. As the final report neared release, governments began to pay attention. India, already frustrated by Boeing's lack of cooperation, submitted a formal complaint to the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration demanding disclosure of all prior seat-related incidents. France and Singapore followed. Then came the bombshell. Two Dreamliners in European service had reported seat anomalies in the past 18 months. One pilot described a violent rearward jolt during takeoff, which was dismissed at the time as mechanical fatigue. Now those reports were being re-examined in a different light. Insurance companies, already weary from the 737 MAX crisis, began investigating whether Boeing withheld key safety data. Airlines questioned their maintenance protocols, and families of victims launched a class-action lawsuit not just against the company, but against specific individuals in its engineering chain of command. The crash was no longer a tragedy confined to a flight number. It had become a global reckoning. For the families of those aboard Air India 171, the discovery of what really happened wasn't closure. It was salt in the wound. Because the lives they lost, doctors, students, artists, mothers, children, weren't taken by war, terrorism, or weather. They were erased by a system that allowed human reflex to collide with engineering blindness. One mother, holding a photo of her son who died in seat 27A, said, He trusted the machine. We all did. At a memorial near the airport, a new plaque has been installed. It doesn't mention the pilot. It doesn't mention the weather. It says, In memory of those lost to silence and to the flaw that was warned, but never heard. And that's the real tragedy. Because this wasn't just a malfunction of metal. It was a malfunction of trust. In the end, what brought down Air India 171 wasn't a thunderstorm, a terrorist act, or a failing engine. It was something far more insidious. A quiet flaw that everyone saw but no one acted upon.
A broken pin, a missed test, a warning lost in a folder, and a system designed to listen only when it's too late. The black box didn't just reveal data, it told a human story, one of reflex, of instinct, of engineers shouting into the void of bureaucracy. And now, that silence has a voice. The question is, will we listen this time? Because this wasn't the first time a plane went down due to a flaw hidden in plain sight. And unless accountability takes precedence over image, over cost, over pride, it won't be the last. Aviation was built on the bones of lessons learned in tragedy. But when we fail to learn, when we choose not to, we aren't flying forward anymore. We're just waiting for the next descent. If this story shook you, don't let it disappear into silence again. Subscribe for the stories others don't want you to hear. Turn on notifications so you don't miss the next revelation. Share this video, because someone you love may be trusting their life to the same system. And comment below. Do you believe Boeing should face trial for what happened to AI-171?